Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. It's Cynic Alex, and we're finally reviewing Scream's new Silence uniform. But that's really confusing to say Silence when the character's base is Scream, so I'm just gonna say Scream, okay? It's the Scream red and white. It's the Canadian uniform for Scream, okay? Now, as far as what she could do before versus what she can do now, the big change for Scream is that she's transcendable, so you can now take her into basically all content. However, besides that, she hasn't gotten any new tricks up her sleeve. However, that being said, they did make her sleeve much bigger. It's a weird way of saying she does a lot more damage now. So that's that's basically it. She has essentially the same combo before, but now you can insta-cancel three and five, and then you can cancel those into four, and you get this massive burst of hair symbiosis stuff. So five is an instant cancel, which would otherwise look like this. Three is an instant cancel, which otherwise looks like this. Of course, like most characters, the transcendent skill is also an instant cancel, which otherwise looks really cool and looks like this. But what that means for you as a player is you can load up on the chain hit damage. She would be amazing with a proc obelisk or a CTP of energy. And you can just do something like three cancel, five cancel, uh, sorry, six cancel, five cancel, three cancel, four. And you can just ram off hundreds of hits, hundreds of hits uh, on your enemy. So one more time, you can do something like six, five, three, four. You got to be a bit quick. I will say that you have to be a little quick with the fingers, but it works really well. Alternatively, when the six is not up, you can do five, three, four. Very, very easy to proc on one of the easiest proc characters in the game and uh, quite good damage to boot. However, there is one thing, so as far as, you know, Scream's kit go, it doesn't seem to be, I mean, she does get quite a few, you know, crit damage, guaranteed crit rate, so you could technically use her with a CTP of Rage, but I think given how easy it is for her to proc, you wouldn't bother doing that. She also does have some chain hit damage here and some physical attack increase, so you'll be able to boost her stats quite well without having amazing cards. The only downside to Scream is that her healing in Synthetic Fusion is not very good. When she gets hit, she heals for 15%, and that can get triggered every 5 seconds. However, you have to get hit for that to trigger. So what I recommend that you do, and what I'll show you in the gameplay coming up, is use the environmental hazards to your benefit. Probably not the poison uh, clouds, but more likely the tornadoes. Let the tornadoes hit you. I know how weird that sounds, because they will heal you if you need the heal. So that may be a frustrating way of playing for some players, it also means that because her heal is dependent on getting hit, she can also be a bit inconsistent in that sense. But otherwise, as far as my build for Scream goes, I've got pretty straightforward Uru here with just enough cooldown to get her capped. The only thing I'm not capped on that I wish I was is the dodge and the attack speed, but I do not want to give her those Urus yet because I'm still considering whether to give her you know, HP Urus or something else, so I'm sort of leaving that open. I have a stage 9 overdrive, which I know could be higher, but it's 30%, so we're not missing out on too much there. We have no artifact equipped, but we do have the 4-star, so we can do a follow-up where we test how good this artifact is. It's the same artifact that Betsy has, so I don't expect it to be transcendent, like just crazy damage, but it should be decent. Uh, and then we have a 140 proc with crit damage. So this is a very run-of-the-mill obelisk. We will do a follow-up with uh, an energy CTP, but uh, for now, she does quite well with this as I want to uh, showcase. As far as the abilities go, what I want to highlight here is not only does she have the symbiote ability, giving her 10% ignore dodge, which is important for Null and, and the other content, but she also has the leadership ability. So Scream gets access to so many buffs from White Fox. It is nutty. So let's see how she uses them. So all this being said for Scream, you're generally speaking going to want to use her for World Boss Legend content. This is where I think she's going to shine. And shine she does. We pop off with our first rotation to the tune of close to seven bars. We're going to use the co-op skill and just proc on four to get some damage here. You can even splash in the one and the two when you're waiting for your next rotation. She does have a very short animation on four. So if you're early, right, if you're early on the proc, you won't feel uh, that much damage. But when it hits right away, it's quite a nice burst. So we're using uh, Sif, Lead, and Valkyrie here. Do we get, uh, do we get, no, we don't. Awesome. You can see how, okay, we missed the third skill there. That was my bad. You can see how easy it is to proc, almost to the point where sometimes, yeah, I, I miss my rotation because I'm so eager 
uh, to just press that there. We got stunned out of the cage. Or we got stunned off the tentacle to, to knock us out of the rotation. But, uh, yeah, this is just... There we go. I have not missed a single proc. The only thing I've missed is pressing the third skill. But that's that's more of my fault, not the game's fault. Or not the rotation's fault. So super easy rotation. Very nice proc-friendly burst. Let's see how fast she ends up doing this. So this is a minute 10 seconds with a 140 proc. This is quite nice. So I expect her to be like sub... Sub 30 or sub, sub 40 seconds when I do give her a CTP of energy, which I think would be very, very nice. And again, it just uh, shores up some of the issues that the combat female hero class had, which is which is quite good because, yeah, that that uh, that section. Can we squeeze out some damage here before he does that? Yep, we can. So really nice burst damage from Scream. Uh, very consistent, very proc friendly. She's not going to compete for top in any one category. You know, she's not, she's not going to, probably not going to be able to compete with Titania. Honestly, not bad, though. And Titania is also a villain. Um, but on the flip side, like, just a very easy to play, smooth character. Uh, we need, we definitely need more of these, especially in the combat female hero category. We have a lot of difficult to play characters and characters that rely only on their transcended skill for damage and things like that. So Scream really represents... Uh, you know, none of that, which is really good because she, she just represents like a very easy to play character. Look at that sick burst. Really, really nice. And I also just, I like the, the colors of her skills and stuff like that. We're not going to get it off. No, there's a little bit short there. But yeah, like she's just cruising, dude. She's just cruising through stage. Stage 29, I know, not the highest stage. We will do a higher stage. We'll go up 10 stages for Mephisto. But I just wanted to showcase this here without White Fox. You know, just so people don't think every single uh, showcase is with White Fox. Therefore, she needs White Fox. Uh, I know I could have used White Fox here because the requirement is only female. But I wanted to uh, just highlight the fact that she doesn't necessarily need that. We're going to let this play out just because we can uh, pop off here. Great damage. Really just solid damage here. Now, you are going to see her get hit. She may... She's going to heal a little bit, but then it's not going to be that much. Okay, we just got to be quick here. Okay, we got the proc. Nice. We're going to use the co-op skill to just dodge some more damage. Not quite enough burst to last all the way through. But you can see against someone like Null, survivability is not an issue. Null just doesn't hit you enough. And it doesn't hit hard enough. At least at stage 20. At least in these lower stages for it to really matter. Against Mephisto, who's constantly hitting you, it does begin to be a problem, which is what I want to showcase next. Going all the way up to stage 39 with a damage proc, a 140 damage proc is very impressive. So this is what I want to highlight right at the start. While her defenses are maybe not going to be good enough to last consistently versus this high of a stage of Mephisto, I really got to say, that the 140 proc doing this much work and having this much burst is is a huge dub for Scream. Now, we are using uh, Crescent lead for the 60% attack plus White Fox. It actually ends up being 65% attack because of the team up between White Fox and uh, Crescent. So pop off here. Okay, he interrupts us a little bit so we don't get the full damage of that rotation. Uh, I thought we would have squeezed it through the Rage proc, Rage proc outburst thing, but uh, no. Okay, you can also do 3 cancel, 5 cancel, 4, whatever really feels better to you. It doesn't necessarily matter uh, which skill comes first. I missed the 3 there. I pressed 1 instead of 3. Okay. One more rotation should do it here. Popping off. Oh, still missing a little bit of damage. No worries. There we go. And that one, that one didn't even activate our proc. So she can actually do this stage with a 140 proc. Imagine how much faster this is going to go when we give her an energy CTP. And again, you may not have an energy CTP to spare, but that's what I like about this character, where she's not going to knock you out of the park. Uh, her performance is so good with such an average build. The only problem you're going to face is right there, defenses. So you can see that I just died. I should have played more carefully. So that is, I think, where you're going to see... You know, I needed to highlight that because a lot of the other symbiotes, especially if you're going to compare her to Toxin or you're going to compare her to Agent Venom, I know they're paywall and stuff, but they have massive healing. Massive, massive healing. 
uh, multiple heals, you know, uh, auto heals, right? Like, so I, I did want to highlight that, right? Whereas Scream is a much cheaper, right? Much more uh, free to play friendly option for higher damage than Agent Venom, similar damage to Toxin, which will seem very appealing. The one very clear downside is that her heal is much, much worse than their heal. It's also worse than Venom's heal because they have auto healing, whereas, uh, you know, and Venom has a 30% heal or something on his kit. Again, I know you can take Venom to tier 4 and level 80 and stuff, but even if you just kept him at tier 3, right? So make the comparison simple. He has a, uh, what is it, 20-30% uh, heal, 30% uh, heal here, right? Whereas Scream only has the 15% that you have to get hit and that has a five second cooldown. So if you're getting hit consistently in between that five seconds and you can't survive until the next hit, she'll just die. Obviously, as a combat type, she has the disadvantage against Mephisto. So you have to take that into consideration as well. Also, that she has pretty low defenses, especially the energy defense being only 15,000 at Transcended is quite low. You can see Toxin has 17,000, Agent Venom has 16,7. So she does, uh, you know, that does pose a problem. However, let's see how she pops off with that energy. I think I think it's time, I, I'm really curious. So I'm not really happy with that. Uh, dying is not productive. You know, it doesn't matter how much damage you do. If you die, you deal zero damage. So we're gonna try this again, one more time and see, maybe I overestimated uh, Scream. Now, one thing you just saw there is that my next proc triggered, uh, which is something that the Awakening skill can do sometimes, especially if the boss stands in the lingering uh, symbiote goo the whole time. Uh, it's pretty annoying, to be honest, to have that happen, and it can definitely uh, lower your uh, your damage. I also don't think that her... Um, I don't think that her uh, heal can trigger when she dodges. Okay, so there we, we actually just went even faster, despite switching one of our strikers from increased damage to supervillains to damage reduction. So I swapped, I had a sentry striker that I swapped for, um, that I had swapped for uh, a, a Daredevil because I didn't want to take damage. We're using the co-op skill again here to dodge this ability because I just, I'm greedy and I don't want to, um, to wait here. But uh, this is posing a lot harder like stage 39 is pretty high for a combat type her damage is undeniably good but again on the flip side some people are going to be quite disappointed with the the damage that she the amount of damage that she takes i switched there because we're so far ahead uh you know we're so far ahead on damage and timing that it doesn't really matter plus we were very close to the rage outburst phase so this just plays uh better into uh you know into screams position where we can just pop off with the burst damage Okay, that was nice. Getting hit with the immunity up, so I didn't uh, trigger the, um, the like I, I triggered the passive without uh, having to get hit and hurt. Because her heal, fifteen percent is not that much, right? You do have to definitely play very carefully. It sort of feels like Sharon Rogers. That's what it feels like. It feels kind of like Sharon Rogers. Her damage is undeniably good but her defenses are really not up to 2022 standards with characters like uh, Hulk running around. So I think that's certainly how it feels. She's very proc friendly like Sharon Rogers. Un unlike Sharon Rogers as well, uh, she doesn't have to worry about um, the, the, the accumulation, right? Oh, I got frozen. So she feels, I, I think she feels like Sharon Rogers in the sense that your healing is just really bad. Like, for 2022 standards, Sharon's healing is really bad. Okay, I don't want to get hit here. But I think we missed our part. But she's cr Dude, like, this is a this was Athena stage for me a few months ago. Did we make it? Oh, I think we did. Okay. You can also do... In this case, you can do 5 cancel, 3 cancel co-op. Because the co-op, she does her fourth skill. So yeah, I, I, I don't know. I find something really charming about Scream, even though it's obvious that uh, she has some defen defensive issues. The fact that she's crushing this stage so hard is really impressive. Like, especially when you go ahead and compare the, the, the cost of Thena, right? One of the characters that I used to clear this stage a few months ago was Thena. And now I'm doing it with this character called Scream, 
who is completely free to play. And we're actually just going to bully him here. Okay. If I can stop getting... And we're done. Bro, a minute 30. A minute 30 left. Again, pretty hard defensively. You definitely want to use a striker like Ghost Rider for the fire resist. He's the only fire resist striker that has leadership. Uh, and Daredevil with the damage reduction does help. So it's not an easy, it's not as easy of a fight as it is with 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 Thena, but that damage is undeniably good. Again, if you need a cheap leadership character that's flexible, can turn to a villain, turn to a hero for something like Shadowland, but also has access to all of these abilities and has a super easy rotation, really all you have to deal with is uh, is the healing being a little bit, um, you know, a bit underwhelming. Best character of the update? No. Best combat female hero? Maybe it's her or She Hulk, right? So yeah, it's not bad, and and having access to that leadership buff is is super clutch if you have White Fox. So yeah, that's the review for Scream. Hit me up in the comments down below. Let me know what you think. Thank you so much for watching or silence. Smash like button, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.